Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, how to bring the love of our Prophet وسلم, when focusing in meditation on your qalb for zikrullah during tawassur a shaykh? Yeah, the, the meditation itself is, is, is the source. That when you're meditating with the presence of the shaykh in front of you and breathing and connecting and asking for the shaykh, just dress me from your light and breathing in that state, the shaykh is like a satellite, they begin to reflect what's from their soul onto the soul of the student. The less you use your head, the more that can be reflected into the heart. Enter a state in which your head can be silenced from what you want, what you're asking for, ask for nothing. Just make the connection, negate yourself to be nothing because the active mind is putting many different roadblocks. And so if I sit into a meditation and Allah want to dress me with a particular dress that day and I keep using my head that I actually, I want this, I want that, I want, I want this, I want this, then my desire may be blocking the tajalli that's supposed to be coming. So my state is to be nothing. So nothing doesn't usually ask for anything. Nothing just enters in a state that I, ilayyanta maqsudi wa ridat matloob, that I know nothing asking for your satisfaction and that I negate myself, negate myself. That say that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and just either I'm going to breathe or make my salawat and send your light into my heart and then I just make istighfar and asking for forgiveness and that I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Because that's only the first level of tafakkur. That in seeing ourself in a nothing state, as much as I can negate myself and begin to see the presence of the shaykh and that that light is dressing me and blessing me. The more I can do that, we'll enter into the next state of tafakkur in which I ask the light of the shaykh to dress me and I negate myself. So it means I don't have to have the knowledges of what to ask for, what to open. I don't have to name things that need to be opened because if I meditate and become nothing and then I say, say down nothing that put your tajalli upon me and I'm like a dot in your juppa. And then you visualize the shaykh from the first being outside where there's two of you, it's you and the shaykh. When you get more advanced you say, there can't be two, there can only be one in this ocean. So I'm making myself to be nothing and that please your ruhaniyat to be and I'm nothing, I'm just a dot in your jubba. And then I ask for the fana of the shaykh that the shaykh's dress is to be upon me. And the more that the dress of the shaykh can come and I vanish will begin to show how much I'm entering into the ocean of fana. So if you understood that one then you understand that when the shaykh comes with the fana he comes already with his knowledges so you didn't have to know anything. He comes loaded, right? So if your pockets have nothing it's not about you having to have, this is an analogy like, oh I need to put $500 on my pocket because I'm going to into this palace. They say, no if you actually empty yourself and that you're nothing, you're nothing, the shaykh is coming with his tajalli. That tajalli already has the $500 in the pocket and he takes you in. So the knowledge is in the uloom that we're seeking is in the fana of the shaykh so that when you emptied yourself the shaykh comes with all the knowledges, all the powers, all the dress and all the realities. That's how you get protected in the last days. Not that you, you know how to do silat, it's not about you knowing how to do it, you just become nothing the soul will begin to connect and they know how that soul and how to interact. And they know, they know, they know with their reflection, with their shaykhs because they're all a reflection from Muhammadun Rasulullah And it goes deeper and deeper into those darajats in which they vanished. They vanished in the light of their shaykh. At that time the shaykh in that tajalli takes that reality to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and they begin again the same system 
of ishq and khudur, keeping the khudur of Sayyidina Muhammad and asking to be nothing and nothing and nothing until the fana of Sayyidina Muhammad begins to dress them and they become Muhammadiyoon. And they know how to turn that on and off in which they interact with the regular being to people and in the time that is required then they interact in their Muhammadan being with people. So these are all the, the depth of going into the haqqaiq of, of madad. So inshaAllah we lose ourselves more and silence the mind of what it wants and what it wants to achieve and what it wants to get that night and enter into a state of nothingness, nothingness, nothingness and then Allah begin to dress with what Allah wants to dress with inshaAllah for that night or for that moment inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, pain in the stomach while reading Qur'an, is it a sign of bad thing and how to deal with it? Yeah, pain in the stomach it could be a sign of just an energy that's trying to process, a dirtiness that's uh, needy, needing to be cleansed. So again, the basis of everything is make your tafakkur, make sure that you have your taweez. And we have uh, new taweezes on our online which has the 313 messengers of Allah and the 313 messengers has to do with the reality of 313 the reality of the, the star of creation and the reality in which Allah gave them the power of the tongue. There's the three powers up, three powers down and the one in the center that is the authority for speaking. So these 313 messengers of Allah they have a tremendous tajalli and blessing for the home. So that taweez is now out and that the, to dress the person, to dress their home, to dress everything. So these taweezes have to be on, on the house, the car, the, the person. The person has to understand their muraqaba and their connections because those are all the cleansing. And as they're cleansing and cleansing then their salawats they can slowly increase. And then when they're reading Qur'an and Majeed then alhamdulillah they have it with all of its protections and that Allah to take away difficulties. And anytime you want to do any readings and salawats we have a meditation area and in that meditation area put water and that this water keep it always covered and that whatever tajallis that you're going to do asking Allah please dress this water and you can put some sweets which we used to put rock candy and that's for shifa, a nabat. I don't know you have an urdu nabat, the sugar candy. Misri, it's called Misri. Huh? Misri. It's this called, wheat? It's called Misri, Misri. Oh okay, yeah whatever you have. We, we used to have nabat because it's sweet and that really actually helps the stomach because it's uh, when somebody can't eat they need a lot of energy. So through the sugar candies that we get a lot of energy and a lot of healing. So you put these nabat, you put water in the areas where you're always meditating and, and praying and asking Allah to send the lights and angels to send the lights on these and then these become you know uh, items of shifa and healing. So that anytime you're not feeling good, the kids are not feeling good, someone's not feeling good you give them a little cup of this, it's filled with angelic lights and this becomes very powerful and, and very strong healing. So that, that becomes a maqam that when you're praying there all the time, med meditating with shaykhs there all the time is a maqam for awliya because they're continuously there you're calling upon them. So everything in that precinct becomes blessed. So we read that at the beginning of the surah, Ta seen til gayat al Qur'an wal kitab al mubeen and when Allah is a fire, this Divinely fire when Allah described that to Nabi Musa all those whom are around that reality and inside that reality are blessed. So as soon as you're meditating that tajalli is coming all around that meditation area. And because the reality of the meditation is true, the angels, the prophets, the, the saints, the, the holy companions, whomever you're asking in these meditations and these lights that Allah opening, 
that becomes a, a blessed location. So put water in it, these nabat, these uh, sugar candies that uh, for, for healing and uh, you drink and eat from those and, and give to family members who are not feeling well, inshaAllah. Mm. And taweez is everywhere. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Is there a difference between Noor and energy? Noor and energy? Yeah. No. The science of it is energy. That for every light to manifest, light is a manifestation. Its manifestation is from energy, from a qudra. If there's no energy flowing, nothing manifests. So even in the world of this reality when a light is manifesting, the essence and the reality of that is a qudra. So the, the power that's coming is allowing this to manifest in a green, a white, a purple. So the nur, its, its reality is from a qudra and a power, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh Miladun Every human brought with the same purpose but how do we recognize what is our unique mission? Your meditation, yeah. You connect and to connect with your soul and to connect with your reality. Once you get to know yourself you'll know your Lord and what your reality and your mission. Your mission, first mission is to know yourself. That we entered into the world, we made a promise in heaven. And that's why we've taught this before that a believer can do many sins but he can't lie. And then the reality of lying wasn't that you can't lie, you know, if somebody tells you, where's this and you, you, you tell a lie and say, no it's not there. That's not the lie. The lie is that you can't lie to Allah on what you promised Him. So when you came if I'm the, you came in the world of light, Allah said, I'm going to send you to earth, you're going to learn about yourself, you're going to achieve this, 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 this and you said, bala. And everybody came to earth and, and forgot that promise and said, no I, I didn't promise that, I, I was just going to be a lawyer, take the money and do what I want. So no, that's not what you promised Allah So everyone promised Allah and those whom are inspired to the tariqahs because the tariqahs hold the key for what you promised. So when Allah guides you to the tariqah it's actually a guidance to recall what you promise so that you don't be a liar to Allah That you cannot say, I lied and oh I didn't know, say, no I sent you to the tariqahs. These shaykhs are guiding you to what you had promised. Now you didn't want to follow that's again you know you have to deal with Allah at that time. But each one has been guided to fulfill their covenant and they cannot change their covenant with Allah You know however difficult it may become in life you cannot change the covenant with Allah You're responsible for not fulfilling it. So that's why the tariqahs they are the ways in which to fulfill the covenant. And Allah gives the covenants to the shaykhs that this one promised that, this one promised that. And the shaykhs responsibility is to guide them to their covenant and that's why when they follow and they submit then they're fulfilling their covenant with Allah InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam how do we do the breathing who and for how long? The, first you have to get timeless reality, the meditation book inshaAllah. That you read the book and connect your heart and email helpme at nurmuhammad.com so that we can send you the initial article on the meditation, how to visualize the shaykh and how to connect the heart inshaAllah. But please everybody out there to get the timeless reality, it's a reference on tafakkur and contemplation. It's a foundation for every type of difficulty that's opening upon the earth. There may be a day in which the internet does not work, in which the channels are not accessible and that, that becomes like a reference, like an encyclopedia that when you have a timeless reality that wherever you are, you're on a plane, you're traveling, wherever it is you open up the sections that you want to read about, how to make the connection, 
how to have the power of wudu, how to repel negative energy, all of those are referenced in that two years of questions and answers so that we could achieve these realities and, and to safeguard them in difficult times. So don't wait till the internet shuts down to order a copy because it won't even come to you. So have these things already resourced and put aside and reading from it, highlighting from it so that you, you understand it, you know, exactly. And that you have your ta'weezes, you have everything there is the foundation for your protection. And it's a spiritual warrior that anyone who understands these teachings and the negativity all around us then it's required to, to have the sincerity to know how dangerous it is so that they completely fortify themselves, their homes, their cars, everything has to have that fortification. People go out to events, come back and they get in horrific car accidents, well because there's hasad. Anytime you do things and, and people call you and put attention on to you, you're going to have an immense amount of hasad. That's why shaykhs don't call out people and they don't identify people because of the immensity of horrific hasad that comes towards people. But either way we have to live a life of uh, continuously protecting, protecting, protecting because of the amount of energies and negativities all around us. So once we take that serious and we live our life with that sort of seriousness then you would imagine to have that as a reference. So two years of questions and answers on only the subjects of meditation, it becomes like an encyclopedia, like a, like a almanac in which you can reference quickly and say, what am I supposed to do under this? When a bad energy is coming all around your feet, go look at timeless reality and it should say something about tea tree oil. But you can't wait to, to have a question on, on, a, on the YouTube only for that. So everything has to be there as a reference, as a protection and it's a sign of faith that when you have these things then Allah sees that that person is believing. When they believe Allah grants the faith and increases the faith inshaAllah. But when the person has nothing and it shows that they don't really believe and this is maybe just a part-time entertainment for some people until Allah makes it serious and everybody will have a life event in which this becomes very serious and very real for them. Mm. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Wa Alaykum As Salaam How do we balance spiritual bipolarity? Sometimes it feels like I'm flipped inside out or my current is the wrong way round. Even when I strongly intend to do good I end up <coughs> making bad choices. Yeah the bipolarity is, is a big problem in spirituality is that the extreme up and extreme down, extremely happy at times and then become extremely sad at other times. How to keep a constant and a control that comes under their spiritual practices is not to be overly excited during the good times and not to be overly sad during the bad times in how to control their state. And that becomes a part of the, the training and of, of rijal. And we said anyone who can't control their state then it shows to the shaykhs who are watching that the person is, is immature and that's what has to be controlled. Whatever that state is, you know there are groups that they scream out everything and they have you know, like Tourette's in spirituality and scream this, scream that, it just shows very immature and that there's no rijal amongst them to contain that one. Naqshbandiya especially has an immense discipline. They shouldn't show any external state of their internal condition. And the stronger they become, the stronger they become, they have to train on how to hold that, right? Because if they don't have a training and every time they feel good they get ecstatic and scream and yell and start flo floating around the room. Well that would be horrific, that wouldn't be the state of, uh, of rijal, it would be more of a clown. So the state in which they train is no matter what you're feeling begin to cut it off because you're not able to control anymore. So that if they start to feel too good, too good and the energy's coming too strong and they're connecting 
let's say they're in a live zikr with people, as soon as they begin to feel that state they've been told by their shaykhs, cut your connection, stop what you're doing so that not to you know start to go out of control and, and not be able to control yourself. So Naqshbandiya is very particular on the ability to control your state and any of your internal conditions should never be seen on the outside. Just maybe a little bit of shaking because of the energy and, and the ability to sort of you know just keeping the energy in place but nothing other than that, no sort of uncontrolled utterances, no actions, no, no nothing so that they show their state of, of maturity. Without that there can't be any progress from the shaykhs above because they said this one is, is, is not able to control. So these are important in the states of progress inshaAllah. Especially for the Naqshbandi shaykhs, if Mawlana Shah Naqshbandi is going to sign off, they're not going to sign off on these states. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi you have so many talks, how can we catch up with all your talks? Don't need to catch up, the minute you turn in that'll be the one that was meant for you inshaAllah. And then you listen to that one and then you just go back slowly listening to the most recent ones and you just listen and listen and listen and alhamdulillah and every new one that comes out you listen to that right away. And everybody reaches at a point in which Allah deemed them to be ready to reach. So uh, nobody got here late, you got exactly when Allah wanted you to get there. And everyone has a capacity into which Allah has given to them. So you may listen and people may listen and then they just understand a little bit more and more and more and at the time they, they maybe had listened earlier they didn't understand anything. So everyone is exactly where Allah wants them to be but we just try to, to do more and to, to listen on a daily basis. If you can listen to one talk on a day or two talks on a day then alhamdulillah and if you can take notes on it so that it burns into your kitab because those talks are from my kitab. So when you listen to them alhamdulillah it dresses your soul but also when you take a little bit of notes from them, highlights or whatever you can, can write of it then it burns that uloom, that knowledge onto your kitab so that it dresses your kitab from those knowledges inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa In regards to taweezes um, for the house and for the cars, where exactly do we stick them? Like is there a particular place or? Yeah, the uh, Surat al Kaf is for the rooms, the entry of the house. So the one with Shaykh Nazim and Ashab al Kaf because it provides a haybah. It provides a, a very majestic where Allah said, had you seen you would have had fear. So anyone with a nefarious activity or trying to come to that home it provides a, a very fearful energy for somebody approaching. And that can also be put into the rooms for the children and for ourselves. The Allahu Haqq, the traditional taweez that was given to Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani from Sayyidina Muhammad in the corner of windows and that also can be into the house and into cars. So it's always like a, a gentle sticker that we have that you put onto a window so that to provide an energy that the beings see that energy. They don't have to see the taweez, they just see the energy emanating from that residence, from that car, from that person and that's enough for them to, to think again about engaging in that location or on that person. And then the jinn taweez is, is for, for what was given to awliyaullah and uh, for the nazar of Sayyidina Hazaz and the protection that been given to accompany that taweez for any again activity from spiritual beings that are unwanted and that again has its own secret and its own realities and its own lights from the, the jinn kingdoms inshaAllah. So each of these taweez is to be in the homes and in the doorways and on the person and on their cars. Cars because the car is a thing that you travel much within it and uh, many different type of difficulties could be sent upon somebody in their car or you know ricochet 
of uh, bad energy that comes towards that person while they're driving or a hasad. So even the car has to be protected, the bodies and, and persons to be protected and the homes to be protected and all of those protections are, are directly under the command of Allah So ignorant people who say that these things and name things with these things they have no understanding of their deen. Allah told Nabi Musa, mark your door and they went and made a sacrifice with the blood of that sacrifice he said, mark your door because my angels of punishment are now coming. If they don't see that blood their punishment will enter the home and they'll all die. Why? The angels know which home not to, to go and to go. Why Allah told Nabi Musa that? Because Allah wants to see if you people have faith. Oh, the same way Allah saying, make your shahada. Why, Allah, why you have to make your shahada? Allah knows He gave you faith or not. But He wants you to hear it and you to remember it. Allah knows everything. This is not about entering in the knowledge of Allah This is about Allah testing us. So He told Nabi Musa to test your people because why? Those people were always arguing with Him. So I would imagine at that time they also said, well why should we do that if Allah's protecting us? Okay, don't listen and they, some of them didn't and they died. But Allah has that in Qur'an that mark your doors until today those people and that nation has a misbah that they keep at their doors as a protection that has their Torah and, and their identity. So throughout religious history this was ruqya and protection, these were signs of faith, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon, salaamu ala al-mursaleen, muhammadillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.